Hello everybody, it's Crafty Rhea, and I'm back again with another card sketch. This is card sketch number 11, and I got the inspiration for this card sketch from a Christmas card that I'm going to recycle. So I kind of cheated, but that's okay. This is the Christmas card that I'm going to recycle and that's where I got the inspiration from. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll back you up so you can see my desk a little bit better. So I'm pretty much copying this exactly, but I'm gonna do a few extra things to this card. Plus I'm going to make another card using this card sketch. And I'm gonna tell you, if your name is Ginny and you're watching this video, stop watching. Well, you can watch the Christmas card, but then you have to stop watching, okay? All right. Hello, it's Crafty Rhea, and I am back with another card sketch. This is card sketch number 11. And I kind of cheated on this card sketch. I got the idea directly from this Christmas card. So I stole the sketch completely off of this Christmas card. Yep, I did. But we're going to do some fun stuff with this, and then we're going to make a special card with it, with the card sketch that's not Christmas. So we'll start off with the Christmas card, obviously. So I'm gonna start by cutting the front off of this card. I'm gonna use this paper trimmer because I also wanna cut that square out. So we'll start with cutting the front off. I want to be very careful and leave as much of the original card there as I can because it is pretty narrow and I don't want to lose any of that side. And while I have my trimmer out, I'm going to cut the sentiment out of the inside. They decorated it really pretty with stickers. So if you do not have a paper trimmer like this one, I would suggest using a ruler and a craft knife to cut this picture out. I'm going to cut it, I'm gonna aim for the inside part of that green. I don't want the green on the outside image. And I'm gonna use the bottom part of the trimmer here so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. It's hard for me to see it way up there. So I'm going to start with my paper trimmer. If you if you notice on the side of the paper trimmer, let me bring it up to you. There's a line right there and that's lined up with the blade. So you can see where on your image that blade is going to cut. So you want to line up that line with the bottom and the top of the image. So you know where to start and stop your cuts. And I'd rather go a little too small than a little too big, although it doesn't really matter. We're gonna cover it up. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Maybe I should bring it up. There we go, that's probably better. And like I said, I'm trying to go right inside that green line. And 
And if I end up cutting off that green line, then I will trim it up here in a second. So then I will take my scissors and just clip out the corner as needed. I didn't get all the way to the edge. You can also use your craft knife. Okay, so I left part of that, the green on there, which is okay, but also some of it gone on here. So I'm gonna trim that off. I'm gonna put this trimmer aside because I like this trimmer a lot better overall. I think it gives me a cleaner cut. So I'm just going to trim off that green edge on all four sides. and just clean up my cuts real good. I don't think I really need to trim the top, but I will. Okay, so that gives me a, a nice clean image. For this card, I will be using a gray card base. I looked for red that matched this card, but I could not find a good red color. But this gray, I think, looks really good. This paper, I think, is from Stampin' Up. I bought it at a yard sale with my BFF Valerie because I didn't have anything in this color. And it has a really nice texture to it. It is gorgeous cardstock. And then I have this image from in there. So I'm going to trim down the outside or the base of this card so it fits here. I need to keep the Merry Christmas on the bottom, but I want to come a little closer to the word Christmas. And then I'm going to Cut it at the top a little shorter than f um, five and a half. I'm going to go five and three eighths. We'll see how that does. And there's still a little room on the sides, but not as much on the top and bottom. So I'm going to take one more sliver off the bottom and a sliver off the top just to even it up a little. I don't want to cut too close off of that top. Okay, there we go. That's perfect. There is a method to my madness, I promise you. And then we have this. So this piece, I do want to mat. I'm going to mat it on this foil, this green foil, because I think it will add some real pretty color to this card. And for this, I will use my tape runner because the foil is non-porous and I don't think glue adheres really well to non-porous surfaces. It would take a little longer to dry. And I do want to leave a little bit of a border around that because I need to cover up any gaps in this. I need to make sure it's big enough for that. I use my handy dandy paper trimmer and trim it out. I don't know where I got this green foil. I've had it in my stash for a long time, and it's not really a foil. It's more of a plastic. It's not really foil. I don't know what it is. 
and I just want to hold it over here. Yeah, I want to make sure it's big enough to cover that hole. And then I want to make this ribbon a little bit prettier. So I have this red ribbon. I cannot find my red sparkly ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I have a roll of it somewhere, I just don't know where. It's not where I keep my normal ribbons. I didn't put it away. So I'm gonna cut a piece that's big enough to go over this card. This is actual cloth ribbon. I'm gonna get my really good fabric scissors out for that. I'm gonna go ahead and put tape on the whole back. Now I would normally just maybe put a little piece here and a little piece here, but I know I'm not gonna be able to line it up. So that's why I'm just doing one big piece. And that way it lines itself up. And it's okay that it's loose there. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this here. I'm going to trim this edge to make it clean. And fold it over. And then for this top part, I'm going to do the same. Make a nice clean edge and then fold it over. Okay. And then I will be adhering this down on the back, on the card base. And I'm going to run a little bit of this glue right down that little strip. It'll come off if it gets on the other side. And then I will line this up on this card. Let me make sure I got it opening the right way. Yep, I do. And then this tape comes right off. It peels right off if you just rub it. Okay, so I have that. And then I have this. And I'm going to just put this up on some foam dots or foam tape. And I'll peel the backing off. Luckily, I have fingernails that do a good job with getting that tape off or the backing. If I didn't, I would use a straight pen. And then I'll just stick that down. So there we go. I think that came out really, really cute. And if I want to dress up some of these snowflakes, I can get my bling box. Get some of these red pieces of bling and put them in the centers. Oh, I think that adds a lot. I like it a lot.
kind of like what I did a couple videos ago on that beautiful gray card. But this time I'm using red instead of the holographic ones. I'll stick one on this one too, just to give a little balance. There we go. I think that's really, really cute. Now in hindsight, I probably would have had this ribbon that way a little bit more because I covered up part of the C, but that's okay. And then I have this piece for the inside. Let me see, that piece isn't big enough. But you know, I think I will use red instead of this. I don't really like that for the inside. I have some of this red construction paper. And actually, I will use my Elmer's glue to adhere this to the inside. I don't really like using tape on construction paper. The fibers tend to pull apart with tape. And I should have used it for the sentiment, but that's okay. Okay, there we go. That card is done, and that was the inspiration for this sketch. There we go, and let's move to the next card. Now, <clears throat> now I will say, if your name is Ginny, if you are my mother-in-law, stop watching the video now if it's before your birthday because I don't want to ruin the surprise. So I'm going to give you a second. If it's you watching, I know you're subscribed. You might watch. I don't know. But if you're watching, turn it off. <laughs> okay. If your name is not Ginny and if you are not my mother-in-law, feel free to watch the rest of this video. My other card was inspired by this sketch and by some happy mail that I recently received. And it just so happens that my mother-in-law's birthday is in July and she loves flamingos. So I have just a regular white card base. I received this paper in the mail um, as happy mail. And also this was in it as well. And I think that side goes really good. And I happen to have these two pieces of cardstock which coordinate. And I have these flamingo stickers. I got these, these are Valentine stickers. I got them at Hobby Lobby. I think they were 75% off or something like that, or maybe 90% off. And that was back um, at the end of February, one of the last times I went out shopping. And I'm also going to be using some rubber stamping. I have this Stampin' Up! stamp kit, and it says Happy Birthday. I've never used this. I don't think I used this ever, and I'm going to go ahead and give that a try. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and use this paper as the background of the card and I'm going to cut it a sixteenth of an inch, inch smaller than the card. It has a hole here at the top so I can't use the top edge. So I'll go ahead and line it up with the bottom edge. 
So I want to cut this to four and one eighth on this side. And I'm going to cut it this way at five and three eighths. I'm cutting the heads of those flamingos off. And this paper is super duper thin. It almost feels like origami paper, but that's okay because it's matted on the cardstock, so it'll be okay. And because it's so thin, I'm going to use, well, I want better weight because I'm going to put ribbon on it. So hold off on that. I'm going to go ahead and make my focal element using this cardstock. The width is fine. Um, I'm trying to see what edge is good. But I'm going to trim the edge a little bit because both edges are a little rough. I think I'll go with that edge. And let me see how tall these are. They are a little bit, they're about two and a quarter. So I'm going to cut this at two and a half. And I think they fit on there really cute. And these are three dimensional and they're up on a pop dot. So I am not going to raise this up off the card. Otherwise, it'll be very thick to go through the mail. Let me line these two up and push them down. Now actually, before I did that, I should have cut the mat. So let me take them and see if they come off easy. Yeah, they will. Just be really careful. There we go. I'm going to mat this on this green. This green goes really, really good with the leaves. Use my Elmer's glue that's charading as our glitter glue in that bottle. Okay, so that's going to look really good. Okay, that's really, really cute. And I have this ribbon, this green polka dotted ribbon I thought would go really cute on here. I don't have a pink that is the same color so I went with the green put my tape runner along the back Thank you. 
I hope that'll work. Yeah, that's pretty good. And now I will tape this paper down to the card backing. paper is very thin and it seems to want to curl. There we go. And then we will put that down. And I will not, I would normally, I would put my focal image up on um, foam tape. But since the card already um, or since the image already is 3D, I don't want to make it any higher. Put lots of glue on the back of that. And push that down really good. Now I will do my little stamped image. I will use this cardstock and I get the happy birthday stamp. I have these um, Ranger Distress Archival inks and this color, I already experimented with it, looks really good on this cardstock. I was going to do it on white, but it is too bright pink. It's way too bright for white but it looks really good on this. These are um, kind of a solid image card or a stamp, so you have to get a really, really good coverage of ink on there. You wanna make sure that ink is totally covering the stamped image. And this stamp is on the block a little crooked, so it's really hard to gauge where it's going to be. I'm gonna hold it there for just a second to let the ink transfer. There we go, and as you can see, it did come out crooked, but it looks so cool. I think it matches perfectly. And this is archival ink, it is permanent ink, so I do wanna clean it off of there right away. I have my stamp pad. It's already wet from a little while ago because I was playing with it off camera. I use um, Ranger's stamp cleaner on there and it works really well. So I'm going to do something that I normally never do. I'm going to cut this out with scissors and not with my paper trimmer. I'm going to just cut it right along the line, really close to the image. Just give it a little bit of a pink border, a lighter pink border. There we go. And then that says happy birthday. I will pop that up a little bit just to make it stand out a little bit more. I have that piece of foam tape there.
There we go. And there's that card to go with the sketch. So here we go. We have the three cards or the two cards and the sketch, the recycled Christmas card and the birthday card. And if my mother-in-law is watching and it's before her birthday, shame on you. Okay. Anyway, thanks again, everybody, for watching. I appreciate you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love it if you do. Go ahead and give this a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Maybe leave my mother-in-law, Ginny, a nice birthday wish. And then after her birthday, I will tell her to watch this video. And thanks again for watching. And until the next time, you know what to do. Go get crafting. Bye-bye.